What can you say about anime? This is among the most notable subgenres in animation history, especially in cinema. Do you know if you ever have a, a, a particular favorite? I'm sure most of you do. I know I happen to have like uh, some of my favorites. I mean, mostly with just um, the ones that I've, I only own in, uh, at, at the back of me. I know that most people are, are big fans of the Dragon Ball series, the Cowboy Bebop. Um, they also like uh, Full Metal Alchemist. I'm sure you like that. I know I really grew up with like the uh, the ones from Studio Ghibli, and you know, Hayao Miyazaki is one of the most notable uh, artists in uh, in Japanese animation. But if I were to have to p pick a particular favorite of mine, I would have to say like the one thing that I grew up with as the first anime I've seen, and that would be Sailor Moon. The Sailor Moon series was one of the biggest highlights in 90s anime, and it continues to hit the media waves today. It began as the original manga series by Naoko Takuchi, and it became an immediate smash hit, resulting into a popular anime series that ran from 1992 to 97 in Japan, and a reboot that came out two decades later. For 25 years, it continued to be a phenomenon among fans worldwide, and it's still loved by many. So for those who are not familiar with this anime, it's about Osaki Tokino, a 14-year-old clumsy schoolgirl that became a heroine that fights against the evil forces. With the help of her cat Luna, her girlfriends, and Tuxedo Mask, they save the world and encounter more twisted figures as they mystify their main identities in the galaxy. I remember discovering the idea of anime when I watched Sailor Moon on Toonami. It had a lot of romance, comedy, drama, action, and of course some of its controversies too. Not to mention some of this cheesy voice acting. Too bad it didn't really hold up to me as well as I remembered. I mean, considering the way I, I ever found out that Deke Entertainment butchered it. Deke. Yes, I'm talking about you, Deke. Deke. During my lifetime, there were three Sailor Moon movies that were released theatrically in Japan. But they were also released in the US by Toonami and they were released on home video by Pioneer. The first Sailor Moon film was subtitled as Promise of the Rose. The second one was Heart on Ice and the third one was referred to as Black Dream Hole. I never got to watch these movies until much later, and they came with two versions, both the edited English dub and the uncut English dub version. This was probably like one of the biggest obsessions that I had when it comes to cartoons. But you know, have you ever wondered if there would ever be like a, a movie adaptation of Sailor Moon, even if you didn't really notice about it? Well, too bad it only occurred to me because I only remembered that uh, that I was engaged with the Pokemon movies, and you know, the first Pokemon movie that came out in the US, you know, it, it was really exciting for me, and you know, it was probably bigger than what you were able to see in the show. And with that recent Viz Media version that just came out with a new English dub and a new cast, you know, I got really excited about it, and I, and I ended up like uh, having to invite my friends along just to see if they were to enjoy it, because they never saw Sailor Moon. To make up for my long hiatus of movie reviewing on YouTube, 2017 is the year that celebrates Sailor Moon's 25th anniversary, and I wanted to focus on reviewing the first film that recently came out with a brand new English dub released by Viz Media. Keep in mind is that while I haven't watched the original uncut Japanese version, I wanted to recap it as my first experience for what I remember watching from the original tape to the new English dub that was brought to theaters this year. So with that said, here we go. The first one is originally titled as Pretty Soldier Sailor Moon R The Movie from 1993 released by Toei Company. It begins with a 15 minute short called Makeup Sailor Soldier. It's about Osaki and Chibiusa discussing on who's the best Sailor Guardian. They both argue about it but the other girls were the ones that stated their honest opinions on who's the best Sailor Guardian. And yet they haven't mentioned about Sailor Moon until the very end. For what I can sum up, Osaki and Chibiusa had their own comic reliefs and they gave out a self-explanatory intro for those that haven't seen the anime before. Like its runtime, it does feel like you're watching a bonus episode without anything bad happening. It's funny, pleasant, and toned down as a warm-up short. Then after that, we come to the movie that takes place around the second season. Usagi and her girlfriends came to visit the greenhouse and encountered a flower-like figure named Fiore, who turned out to be an alien from deep space that had a past friendship with Mamoru. However, as time passed, Marmoru forgot about the promise that Fiore mentioned, which made matters worse to his case. He suddenly vowed to not give up on his promise to bring back roses to him. The Sailor Guardians discovered he possessed an Exenium flower that brainwashes his mind by thinking that they are his enemy, which is hard to believe because the flower that he had with him is actually the main villain who controls his mind like a puppet. So Fiore takes Mamoru for his protection against Sailor Moon, and she and the rest have to go save him from his evil forces. Now not to give away some of the spoilers for those who have not seen the film, it's only like 60 minutes for its runtime, so all I can tell you is that 
It has like a lot of interesting concepts that were not shown from the Deke version. Fiori came to Earth and met Mamoru after his parents died in a car accident. He gave him a rose as a promise to his return, and later he showed his cares by proposing to him. Fiori has this homosexual-like feeling towards Mamoru that he didn't realize Usagi was the one that gave Mamoru the flower beforehand. My friends and I reacted to this when we saw this in the theater, and we were joking about his gay relationship just by looking at his gesture. At the same time, I feel that his close friendship with Mamoru is perfectly normal, and I think him being gay is also pretty normal. Sailor Moon R the movie showered me with nostalgia and it astounded me with an impression of a single flower petal. Sailor Moon proved to have a great power, love, and emotion given by many, and this movie shows that she's as stronger as anybody can be. I personally love the dialogue because the dubbing proved that it can do so much with an official impression. And the animation has had this 90s hand-drawn kind of theatrical look to it, and it looks gorgeous for the time. For 1993, the movie itself looks gorgeous with the old-fashioned 90s hand-drawn style to it, and Viz Media did a great job remastering the original film transfer. The backstory is nicely connected, they gave a sense of characters' personalities that were represented in this film, and their emotions are really effective. For example, Usagi showed that how much she cares about Mamoru, despite the odds that they go through within the time they discover each other. Anyone that can tell what they are meant for each other, no matter what happens to them. This is a perfect example of how anime couples have different personalities, but they have a connection that brought them together, and it's nicely told in a specific backstory. Surprisingly, the voice acting is pretty well done too. As much as I remembered adoring the original Deke voice acting, the Viz Media actors seem like they're trying to put a lot of heart into matching the characters' personalities. I was completely touched with the emotions that Stephanie Shea provided when she portrayed Usagi. The others did great too. The one actor that voiced Fiore was by Benjamin Diskin, who surprisingly was the actor that I remember hearing from him was from Numbers 1 and 2 from Kodane Kids Next Door and Eugene from Hey Arnold. I also like how the editing was made. Most of the transformation sequences were recycled from the series, but it's well mixed with the blunt pumping music score that I've heard. It has some of the best rock music scores mixed together with stunning animation. What makes this movie memorable would be the ending. The most epic combination with the most over-the-top music score and a legit twist that takes place where Sailor Moon sacrifices her friends with the Silver Crystal. If I were to mention one minor nitpick that I have with the film, I don't think that the dubbing concerns me. I'm talking about the one thing that should have been improved. For example, when Sailor Moon and the Guardians teleport to deep space, the flower asteroid appeared in CG. To me, looking at it just makes the animation look choppy. The design looks cool though, but the way it was originally animated didn't match the traditional shots of it, and it could have made it look stand out. My guess is they were trying to add something this big to their budget, but it just doesn't seem to appear right as soon as it cut to the close-up in the animation cell. And just another quick mention would be the flashing effects. Most of the time it looks awesome, and it seems looks really effective in the climax. However, sometimes it can go from mild to just... too much. Anyone that has suffered a case of seizures from constant flashes will know what I'm talking about. From what I understand, this kind of effect is commonly used in Japanese media, and at least it's not as seizure-inducing as the Electric Porygon episode of Pokemon, or the god-awful Weird Al's Ear Booker Productions logo. Aside from some of the animation flubs it suffered, the animators have put a lot of effort into bringing Sailor Moon to the big screen, and, and that was the time that it became so popular in the early 90s. And with Viz Media giving their take on their new English dub release, I was glad I got to see it when that came out in the US by its entirety. In my opinion, I consider Sailor Moon R the movie as one of the best anime movies I've seen on the big screen. For a Sailor Moon feature film that lasted only 60 minutes, it kicked ass when that came out for a limited time. Many people were to consider it as a standalone feature film outside of the series, and it is debatable if it's good as the Pioneer English dub or not. Depending on which you were to prefer, I think the new one is an improvement. It's fun, action-packed, emotional, romantic, and pretty hilarious at times. It has some small bits of moments that gives you a chuckle, but it can put you in the edge when it comes to some questionable content that could have been over the top. Regardless, it's a classic that proves Sailor Moon to be one of the most recognized figures in anime. I recommend seeing it if you're a die-hard fan of Sailor Moon, especially those who have grew up with the Deke version. If you're not a fan of it, I totally understand, and you probably have a different taste of what you would expect to see. Oh, by the way, you gotta love the DVD art cover. It has some neat graphics, but some of the features could have been put together, like the Makeup Cell of Guardians featurette. To me, I feel that they could have added 75 minutes to a total, 
but at least Viz Media have included the trailer of the film, unlike all DVD releases nowadays. But what am I complaining about? I think Viz Media deserves a lot of credit for bringing Sailor Moon back, and I'm hoping to look forward for their continuous releases theatrically and entirety. Hopefully you enjoyed this review, because this is something I've been wanting to do for a long time. If you'd like to see me do more reviews, I'll be happy to do some more of that, if I have the time. Well, thanks for watching, and I hope you have a moon-tastic night. By the way, who the hell would want to spend $100 on a DVD copy of The Promise of the Rose from Half Price Books? I thought this place was Half Price Books, not Full Price Books. Well anyways, let's just lay this all down so I can make a quick announcement here. Many of you have known me for providing the Studio Logo compilations for over the years, like the Logos from Around the World series. This is probably something that I've been doing for quite a while, and it's not just for myself, but for the Logo community. And this is probably one of those reasons that my channel, Cruiser Studios, has now been a subsidiary for a network that is now formed by a great friend of mine under his SC Media Works channel. Steven Cesar is a founder of his channel, and he is providing great content that I recommend watching. The one series I would recommend watching would be his Rise and Fall series, because he covers the history of production companies in the form of a documentary, and he narrates the founder's struggles with high and low breaking effects. For this coming month, he'll be covering the one company that provided nostalgia and some interesting facts and figures of its series of cartoons that they made over the years. If you love the following cartoons from this company, check out his Rise and Fall series involving movie studios that came and went because he's currently giving the one cartoon company an episode that it deserves. Be sure to subscribe to his channel and check out his upcoming episode of Rise and Fall. Dick. No, no, it's pronounced Steak. Dick. Whoa. Hey, what are you doing back here? You should be back in bed. Dick. No, no, you're pronounced as Dick. 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 That's better. Now go back to bed. Dick shit. Excuse me. <laughs> Is it Sheila Dick shit? <laughs> hey, that's internationally offensive. Stop laughing. Now go back to bed. Ah! 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 That's... Ah! Hey. Ah! 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 You're such a dick.